Malo je sad neugodno pričati nakon ovako... It is not nice to speak about uh, after these beautiful words that the parish priest and I want to thank him for these three years that we spent here and all those things everything that he did here it is good to be good parish priest when you have good good assistant parish priest when you have a good parish priest who always listens to you who's always support on your life journey It's always a blessing to be able to perform from this place, from this altar. And on one hand side, I understand all of you who stand here at the sun in the heat. <clears throat> Sometimes when I'm 15 or 16, I came for the first time to the youth festival and for three years I spent, I would spend five, six days and now it is a blessing to be able to come from the other side and to share some of the thoughts from our life experience. I would slowly <coughs> stop at the motto of this youth festival and it is learn from me and you will find peace and you will find rest. The beginning I will just briefly share the brief evangelic text that this excerpt was taken from and posed at a few parts. This text from Matthew's Gospel is Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for yourselves. For my yoke is easy and my burden light. In the beginning, I would like to pose at this verb to learn. It is a beautiful characteristic. It is a beautiful thing. And certain things in our lives we can learn ourselves. We can take a book an excerpt and see how somebody is doing something and later on we can put that into into the action ourselves but learning is about important figure and that figure is the the one of, of a master the one who's trying to teach others it is always beautiful when somebody so shows you how certain things function and it is not that he says to you, you do this in this or that way. A beautiful thing was the figure of the, the model of the teacher from my school or elementary school or, or, and all those who were raising me that I had in my priesthood life. It's always good to be able to encounter to meet someone even though we did not agree but now to apologize and to see how we go in our life and continue to go on i believe that my younger brothers are here we franciscans who live in bigger community we have that blessing of being able to live with the older franciscans older priests some of them are 80 plus who have great life experience even though sometimes we do not have the same attitude it is always beautiful when we take a seat at the end and when we younger franciscans are able to have some lessons to, to observe from them something that they had in their life since they have much experience it is always good to acquire a new knowledge to widen our horizons and to but besides all of these that any one of us had in our lives for us Christians there is a special place given by another teacher and he is Jesus Christ he is our divine teacher Jesus in the gospel they have many titles for him and one of the titles most frequent titles 
And that is the Jesus Christ, that we are all his disciples. And then, there were only 12, but we can see later on that this refers to all Christians, to all community, and all of us who are gathered here are Christ's disciples. Jesus is different than any others. If we look at our elite professors, we will see that they require for a certain profile of people. It is a great model. And there is a closed circle of the people. On the other hand side, Jesus Christ and his school, he is inviting all of us without any conditions, without any anything. The main is what Jesus is asking of each one of us is that to allow him to be thoughtful to him and to not to be somebody's example it doesn't mean to follow to absorb the things that he said to be taught in some of the qualities there was a famous figure of the master there but Jewish disciples when they would learn much knowledge they were able to abandon the master was no longer needed to them but we unlike them we are called to be with our and called to be with our master to follow him his example his personality later on all of the words and all of the things that he what does it mean to learn from Jesus as he says in today's gospel to learn from Jesus it means to cling to him to remain strongly with Jesus to be permanently attached to him in our everyday life to follow him and to share the gaze of this world and each one of us can ask ourselves who do I learn from in our lives when I have need for some knowledge who do I want to go to there are many teachers not just those direct but we can see how media especially social networks in the in indirect way they want to shape us they want to be our models and our teachers and now shortly i would pose at us as those who are christ's disciples at some qualities that we ourselves should have in our daily life starting with some events from the gospel let us go back to the beginning at yesterday's gospel that we were listening at the time of the Eucharist, let, we heard how people said, but despite the great thing that the God the Father said, he's doing, making a mistake, he as Christ's disciple is pulling off his master, takes him aside, He's trying to teach his master. He simply did not like the fact that Jesus needs to suffer, that he needs to take his cross, because that is not how Peter imagined God to be. Peter wants to be disciple to Jesus instead of allowing that Jesus is teaching him. And one of the first characteristics that we should have as disciples we should be thoughtful we should be allowing Lord to lead us in our lives then Jesus said one thing to the Peter go away from me Satan but the experts who know the translations better they said they say that he's actually said to him Peter you need to go behind me and this is the goal of one disciple not that Jesus is following us but that we in our lives 
are always behind Jesus that we allow him teaching us even though many things in great moments will not be clear to us but this is what is required from us a trust there is a trust required from us and simply that we are led to God's leadership and sometimes we want to change God instead of allowing God to change us through prayer and we can see how it is not easy always to be disciple of Jesus very often maybe we do not agree in certain things and what we need sometimes is a time to allow Jesus to change something in our lives the other characteristics is that we should have is listening and I believe that many of us have been listening a lot unlike Peter who wants to teach Jesus instead of listening in the Holy Bible we find a beautiful attitude in Judaism there was a custom that disciples are sitting at the feet of his disciple and they would be underneath they would be directed towards their disciple and it is the attitude of listening we find a beautiful example in the 10th chapter from Luke's Gospel that we've been listening a few Sundays ago it is the Gospel about Martha and Mary while Martha was working Luke evangelist says that Mary sat at Jesus feet and she was listening to his word and I believe that each one of us it can be easier to find ourselves in Martha who works a lot and as if sometimes we want to impress Jesus with our things and with our great deeds and Jesus sometimes is asking only for us to stop to pause a little bit in our lives and to listen but to listen is not easy we would all rather speak and we would all rather be teaching as Peter instead of stopping and allowing other allowing our God to speak to us maybe we can start with our mutual relationships and how much we allow others to speak to us in our prayers we rather say some things and give some things instead of posing and instead of listening to God's voice but it is not easy to remain in silence with our wounds and with all of our faults how to listen in one of the more beautiful experiences here in Medjugorje that I had one of the most beautiful experiences is the duration and silence that we have during it a few days ago when we prayed instead of many candles during the time of the prayer many people from all over the world there was a big silence and it is very hard to find at some place such experience when thousands and thousands of people can be silent when they can be kneeling down before the Lord and allowing the Lord to speak to them it is such a beautiful message that Medjugorje is offering to this modern world that we pause that we allow Lord to speak to us that we recognize God's voice in the noise of this world a beautiful characteristic that we are invited to have as Christ's disciples is to be opened and to be ready for the change at some places in the gospel we find that Jesus was teaching his disciples during the night and he was explaining things to them a beautiful example of this night conversation we find in the third chapter of John's Gospel when Nicodemus comes to Jesus and in the beginning of this conversation Nicodemus is saying the word to Jesus 
master and we know how Nicodemus was recognized in, in his time and we know that it is very hard in this world today to find two masters, two teachers who are prepared to talk and to converse and allow one another to be taught by the other. And But Nicodemus allows Jesus to teach him. And with him we notice this openness and readiness for the change, which is absolutely important. Nicodemus, not like us, understands completely what God is saying to them. Sometimes it takes time and the effort so we would recognize what God is saying to them. But it is important that to be opened, not to be closed. And we find certain people who do not want to give up on their ideas and their opinions. It is hard to work for, with them because they always want to teach others instead of allowing sometimes to be taught. Let us remember the example of the Blessed Virgin Mary. On the 2nd of August, we listened to the Gospel when the angels came to the Blessed Virgin Mary and we see how she was opened. And she was really all open to the Lord. Everything was not clear for her. She did not completely understand everything. Sometimes we do not need to understand everything. In our faith, we cannot completely understand God. But it is important to allow God to lead us and to change us. Something else that we notice with the Blessed Virgin Mary, she wasn't afraid to ask the question to the angel how she would conceive a child when she does not know her husband. It is not bad like she, she did to ask and to wonder when we do not know certain responses in our lives to go to the Lord, to go with a humble attitude, with the attitude of being opened and to allow His Word to be the final word in our lives. Learn from me. Learn not how we impose God, our will, but to learn for God's will to reign in our lives. Very often this is mentioned in our latest messages right here in Medjugorje. This invitation to be opened that we may be open to the Lord, that we may open our hearts to Him. And this is what the Blessed Virgin Mary did, and this is what Nicodemus did in his life. Another thing that is important when we speak about openness is for us to be open to the Holy Spirit. It is absolutely beautiful that here in Medjugorje, before the beginning of the morning prayer, we say the hymn to the Holy Spirit and we pray that the Holy Spirit may lead us in these days in all of the things and in all of the words that we would hear on that particular day. The apostles did not understand everything, only when they received the Holy Spirit, only then they understood completely what Jesus wanted from them. So it is beautiful in our day, at the beginning of every single day, to invoke for the power of the Holy Spirit, that He may lead us in our lives, that He may always lead us in the heritage that Jesus Christ wishes to give to us, to learn from Jesus Christ. He says that he is of a meek and a humble heart. And this Gospel is read for the Feast of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. It is also important that we, just like John the Apostle, come to Jesus, that we lean on Him, that we lean our head on His bosom, on His heart, that we allow, try that our heart and our interior may be like Jesus meaning that we try to love the way Jesus loved God and His loved ones, to learn from Him how to be, treat other people and our neighbors. It is more important to learn from Him how to pray. Beautiful scene from the Gospel when Jesus on one occasion was in silence and He prayed. He did not want his disciples to see him, but when the disciples discovered that, his, that he was praying, 
they ask from him that he teaches them how to pray. And we see that Jesus never imposes certain things in him, but he's trying in his life and in his example to show us, and he's inviting us to follow him, to follow his footsteps in our lives. And more we go away from Jesus, more we learn from him, more we listen to the word of God, we would become similar to Him, we would become united with Him, then our heart would be like His heart, our words and our deeds would become like His. And only then we would be able to go back to the initial harmony that existed between God and the first people before the sin entered the world and brought the restlessness we would go back to the beginning when man was in peace when he was in the harmony with himself with the nature with his loved ones with the environment around him but more often when he was in the harmony with god it is the biblical peace it is true peace that jesus wishes to give to us to be in the unity with god and I believe that each one of us, whether sometimes or at any point in our lives, we sought for peace, but peace cannot be without God. And we see that every step, people, institutions, media, they offer us peace. Sometimes they offer easy solutions. But for true peace and for the true safety, what it takes is time. True peace cannot come just like that. Then it is a false peace, it is false safety. God never promises to us that it would be easy, that the change would take place suddenly, but He is asking of us for sacrifice. He is asking of us to be persistent, and He promises that He would always be with us. He doesn't say it would be easy. He says He would always be with us. When Jesus rose, His disciples were in the fear, and they were closed behind the doors. And when the risen Lord came to them, the first word that He told them was, Peace be with you. Jesus saw that His disciples were in the fear and in the restlessness, and very often He sees that and he wants to bring his peace to us and we can see that peace can only come from the Lord from true genuine peace and there will not be that without God we notice that now in this world we saw that through the entire history when people try to create peace at the wrong, in the wrong way but that was always causing for greater restlessness I also mentioned how peace means to be in the harmony with God. We know what is destroying this harmony. It is always sin. Sin is something that destroyed the essential peace, the essential harmony that was there between God and man. And I believe each one of us has that experience in our lives, the experience of sins, that instead of bringing us peace, it can sometimes bring us short peace and safety. But in the long term, it always brings restlessness into the lives of our mutual lives, but more important, into the relationship between God and men. Sin is always creating a burden in our lives. If we go back to the beginning of this short extra gospel that we heard in the beginning, we will notice how Jesus spoke about some sort of burden. Jesus says that we should come to Him, that we take His yoke, that we surrender to Him our yokes. What is the yoke of Jesus? More importantly, what is the burden that we carry in our lives? I believe that each one of us felt that, of carrying the burdens that we don't need. Sometimes it is other people who do not need, who, do not, who impose that, and sometimes it is us who 
into the lives of other people are placing these burdens, yet there are burdens that we place on ourselves and we put it on our shoulders. Maybe this is some wrong superficial decisions, wrong war do deeds, but most often it is the sin that is burden to our souls and sometimes we get used to that it is never good it is, we should never get attached to sin we should never be afraid to come to confession and to remove that so that burden from us by getting ready for this catechesis I remembered an example that I had when talking to one person many many months ago this person witnessed to me that at one point of his life he decided to make a turning point and to take different direction in, in her life. She witnessed that it was right here at where she confessed and then she converted and followed Jesus. And for a couple of years everything was fine. And then she fell down. She only did one sin that wasn't so big. She did not have strength to come to confession. She was afraid to come and she was afraid to surrender to the Lord that burden. She was afraid of falling down again. She took the old burden. She put on her shoulders the burden of sins and it wasn't necessary to carry that and she carried it again for a few months, even for a few years. And to remove that, it's not much that it's needed. In these days, I believe that you noticed this cross of Saint Damien. It is a cross that has such a great importance for us Franciscans. It comes from a certain period where Jesus is not presented in a suffering position. But if you look in his face, you will notice how Jesus is joyful, how it is his gaze is kind. We see that his hands are extended as if he is inviting us to come to him. As if he is inviting us and saying that the altar is the place of the encounter, the place where he wants us to give him our burdens. There is another place where we remove that those burdens. It is confessional and the sacrament of holy confession. Very often people are afraid to come to the Lord, but if you look at Christ's face, you will see how He is inviting us to come to Him. And these are the words that He gave at the beginning of this text. Come to me, all of you who are burdened and weary. We see that God is denied inviting perfect ones, but those who are burdened. And whenever God is inviting, God does not force anyone. God is always offering freedom. He is inviting us to choose ourselves, not to be afraid, and to come to Him. One of the most beautiful experiences that I have as a priest here is exactly the experience of confession. When we notice a person who enters confessional and at the face of this person we can see that this person carries great burden. It is obvious, but unlike when they leave confessionals, we can see that they are joyful and what is most important, they are not burdened. And while the others are placing burdens on us, God is the one who removes that. And very rarely people would invite someone in the company, people who have burdens, who have difficulties. But we see that our God and our Master, He is quite unusual. And he's inviting such people, and I believe that each one of us, we can be recognized in these things.
Jesus said that he wants to give us peace. He wants to remove the burden that we carry ourselves. He wants to give us true peace. But Jesus says to take our yoke on us, that we surrender our burden to him, that we take his burden. And we can see how Jesus does not promise us a life without cross and a life without burdens, but his burden, his cross, is far easier than what we place on ourselves in our lives. When we take the yoke of Jesus, he does not promise us that it would be easy, but he promises that he would always be with us. He would constantly help us in our lives. In our creation edition of the Holy Bible, before this text, there is a beautiful um, title, and it says, Messianic Invitation, that is, our salvation and our eternal happiness. But this happiness and this peace is not something that we can obtain by ourselves, and it is not something that we can obtain without God. Here in Medjugorje, we honor Our Lady as the Queen of Peace. It is exactly peace that is one of the main messages, one of the main words that is most frequently repeated in her messages. It is inviting us to peace, peace that needs to reign between God and men. And therefore, while you are here in Medjugorje, especially while you spend time in the silence, being collected during the time of the Eucharist, try to see what is it that takes away your peace. What are those things? What are those people that bring restlessness to you instead of peace? Try to seek as close as possible to God, completely to surrender to Him, and then peace would gradually enter your and our lives. God is the one who brings us peace, but He is asking of us that we bring peace into the life of the other people. The first thing that He did was when they said to other people is peace to this home. And He said if anyone is a friend of peace in this home, then peace would remain on him. What a beautiful word to be a friend of peace, to be peacemaker, just like Jesus was in the Beatitudes. And we can see that with a good part, it depends on us whether peace would remain in our lives. And this depends whether we would accept the message of God. Unfortunately, we can maybe not bring peace in the world and peace in the lives of other people. It is not in our authority, but what we can do is to maintain peace in our lives and in our hearts, to maintain God in our lives, to keep the peace in our families, in the town where we live, where we work, to remove from our lives, especially from our families, all those realities and all those qualities that are creating restlessness and discussions. And in the end, I would just like briefly to message the example of our Holy Father Francis. In a certain prayer, he asked from the Lord to make him the instrument of his peace. We see how important it is to pray for peace, to pray for peace in our lives, but also to pray for the peace in the world. Also, those who wrote his life said that Francis took his speeches and he started out always with the words, May the Lord grant peace upon you. It is a beautiful example that we can use in our mutual relationships that we, just like Francis, just like disciples of Christ, always start our conversations with this greeting of peace that we, just like Francis, are people of peace, but that we have peace in our lives, that we may be in peace with God, and only then we would be able to grant a true peace on everyone. May the Lord grant His peace to you. Uh, thank you.